Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I am your host Scott and with me as always is Daniel. Oh, excuse my formal name, lovely. Dan to me and you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just a reminder that this show can be found on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, if you want to subscribe you can join us every week. Um, this week's show we are talking about training camps. We are. Yeah. Yes. So swimming training camps, we've both had a hell of a lot of fun on training camps. It's been a crazy month, yeah. Um, some more enjoyable than others. Um, uh-huh. And I think in total we've been to, I'd say about 12 or 15 between the both of us. Something like that. My first one was when I was 13 years old. Yeah, mine was about 14. And I think I went all the way through to maybe 19 years old. So that's yeah. six for me. Six. No, I didn't carry on swimming until I was 19. No, true. Yeah, you gave up quite soon. Definitely, definitely, definitely <laughs> stopped when I realised that sprinting was all it it's, was going to do. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, it is tough. Um, so this this episode, the goal of it is to kind of give you a few stories from our training camps, but also some tips. So what you're likely to find out about training camps if it's your first time, the things you need to prepare for, the do's and don'ts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, mm. So training camps are likely to be probably your hardest week of training you've ever done from uh, i would agree especially if you're as young as 13 yeah yeah it was because uh, it's usually a week long isn't it unless you get to the higher levels then you yeah. probably do it over a matter of months but for the first time yeah, we're, we're not talking about right. the Adam yeah. pts of the world yeah here. the smaller clubs actually yeah. say yeah 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 so it's usually a week long intensive so it's it's going to be the hardest week of your life but it's also going to be probably the most fun Oh, you can't help but enjoy yourself. Got, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Like, like we said, we've got so many stories. You've heard in previous podcasts yep. that um, a lot of the training camps were actually our first trip abroad without parents. Yeah. Um, with our friends. That that was good fun. Um, actually, I, I, did me and you ever go on a training camp together? I don't think we did, no. But by the time I joined Gloucester, I think you were slowly on the way out anyway. <laughs> slowly <laughs> on the way out. Thank you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think training camps help with a lot of uh, independence. Okay. Um, so if you're if you are as young as thirteen, fourteen, you're very quite you're quite reliant on mum and dad as being the taxi driver, yeah. and they're making food for you and all the rest of it. Um, you don't get to make your own food on the training camps or anything like that, but you do have to make your way to the pool. You have to get yourself up. You have to set yourself like I remember writing like diaries and logs of what I've eaten, the amount of okay, meters I hard. swam, and what I did in the session, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Proper studious. Yeah, well, better that, was than part of us, that was part of it. Yeah, Better than you ever did at school. Probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there were a few kids that were quite unlucky that their, their parents went with them as chaperones. Yes. Yeah. But to be fair, they were always the worst behaved kids. That's very true. <laughs> from, yeah. from memory, the, those parents who came along, they were always telling their kids off and it, it, it was good they were there. Yes, I know. <laughs> you need the chaperones, otherwise you'd just be... Yeah, the, co- the coaches them. don't really do the discipline. Not really, no. They just that's almost like a holiday for him, I find. I can remember they, a few coaches coming back to the uh hotel room nice and drunk. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice holiday for them. They just yeah. did two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, maybe a bit of land like base stuff in the uh, in the morning. Yeah. In the afternoon, sorry. But that was it. Yeah. So as them. we mentioned before, um it is gonna be the hardest week of your life. Mm. As a sprinter personally, there were some training camps where I think the coach just had a mindset where it was, come on, we're away, get the meters in. Yes, and yeah. They kind I, of, I, they're, they, they're hard. They're hard to deal with. Yeah. Ment- mentally more than anything. I'm very much, you might know with all the tutorials and stuff, but I'm very much quality over quantity. Yeah. And I think coaches get in the mindset of, right, we're, in a, we're, we're abroad, we're in such and such a place, and we're doing a 50-meter swim, so we have to get the meters grounded out. Yeah, so and training camps are usually at a 50 metre pool. Yeah. The clubs that we swam at, we weren't lucky enough to actually train week in, week out in a 50 metre pool. We just no. had a 25 metre pool. That's right, yeah. So that that was kind of a big step up, but after two or three sessions, you kind of really get to grips with a long course and then... Yes, yeah. And then when you return home, man, does that You get 25? a little bit dizzy, you know, oh, yeah. turning all the time, yeah. It really feels quite small. Yes, yeah. But, um, yeah, like I was saying with the in- independent stuff, um, for my first one when I was 13, I, for some reason, was being being put in charge of passports. But well, this doesn't is, sound like a Which is crazy. Idea. No. Well, <laughs> everyone had their own sort of Yeah, I know, but I've about. been on holiday with you. And, and uh, all you do is you just coast along and go where everyone else goes. You in charge? Really? Well, well, this is a problem. I think people found out 
<laughs> they, they, yeah, okay. And they realised actually we'd never give him his passport again. So what happened was uh, we were at the uh, the airport. Uh, where were we? I think we were at McDonald's, which is already a bad start. And you have these pe- paper bags. Not sponsored. You? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you have these paper bags. And I just thought, oh, it'd be a good idea to put the passports in there. And of course... In the McDonald's paper bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? I put, I put, the, <laughs> I put the, uh, the bag in the bin full of the passports. And your, then your passport. Mine. Someone called Ben. Loads of all this stuff. I think I had like five or six in there. And they were in the bin. And we got to the security and we we're like, oh, oh, oh my. where are the passports? And so, um, yeah, I had to go back to that specific bin. Luckily, they were still there. But there are like three or four <laughs> of us digging through trying to find this, these passports. I'm going to yeah. say for most people, we, we won't use that as a piece of advice for them. No, that's a big don't. That one, yeah. No, but, but it, like, it was a big learning curve for me. How often is that going to happen? Not very I, often. I don't think nowadays thirteen-year-olds would be given given passport. a responsibility. Probably not. They're probably no. their own I mean, passport. Yeah, well, they should. They need to learn these responsibilities. I yeah. definitely learned it myself because I've never lost my passport again. It's always been double checking all the time. I'm going to hold so, you to that. That's fine. Next yeah, time okay. we go away this summer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fine. <laughs> you watch me. Sometimes I wear like football socks. And the passport was stuffed inside the football sock just to make sure it's what? Yeah, I have done that. Not anymore. That was when I was. Oh, a bit I was going to say we've been away. And yeah, I haven't done that recently, no. but I did used to do that just um, to make sure I never lost it. Okay, so the increase in responsibility is something for everyone to look forward to on training camps. Yes, it's yeah. independence. It's fun away from your parents, but yeah, don't throw passports in bins. Why are we? How have we got to that point? I have no idea. Should we just go on to the next point? What is the next point? Next point. Um, I'd probably say diet. So you said you did a food diary. I did, yeah. Did you um, not do this? I thought no, it was a regular we, thing. Because I did this every year. I know diet's really key when you go away because yes. your body's, especially 14, 15, 16, your body's probably not used to these meters. Mm. So the food diary is kind of, it's less for you, more for the coaches, just to make sure you're putting in the, the amount of fuel you need to. Well, you'll be burning more calories than you were used you, to beforehand. Before. So we didn't do a food diary. We actually did um, weight checks. Okay, yeah. So it, it, did it, we do that? I must have, must have done that. Kind I can't of, remember. It, it, it's not quite fat shaming, but it's... I think it's more of a check because being away, let's say yeah. you're in somewhere so like we, Spain or something like that, it's going to be hot all the time. And so if you're dehydrated, you're going to yeah, lose I, a lot of weight I quite quickly. It. So. If you lost a certain amount of weight, you were pulled out of the next session. You weren't allowed to do oh, it. Oh, we really? You actually had to rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was key because actually it happened more when I got older and training camps. I think even the coaches got more experience. Mm. Um, at the start, you were expected to do every two-hour session twice a day. Yeah, until again, the that's end the of quantity camp. coming through, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then as kind of my training camps went on, you kind of you understood your body a lot more. Mm. Um, and you could get a feel for when you you needed to stay at home and yes, just have yeah. a rest because your body just couldn't take it. Um, it kind of separates actually the, the boys from the, the men, doesn't it, a little bit, I find. Cause a lot are of you them, saying I'm a wimp because I need uh, a yeah, rest? Yeah, sometimes. I don't know if you've ever seen them swim, but my lord, there was Whoa. a few times where you bottled out, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> there, there was the odd session, I, I can remember, when it was 400s IM off, oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And that was no use to me whatsoever. Do you remember a summer, um, we never went on train camp, this is going back for another session, where a summer always cl- um, claimed that they always had cramp, and then always faked it. Yeah. And then the one time they actually got cramp, ended up crying and screaming because they were in yeah. so much pain. Yeah. So it does, like I was saying. So you're, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're definitely learn the extremes of your body on yeah. training camps. Again, and, it's all and, a big learning curve. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, And diet is really key to that. So even, I, I wouldn't advise you really to check your own weight because that just becomes unhealthy if you mm. carry on doing that. But keeping a track and make, making sure you really are putting in enough calories every week, every every week, every day. Yeah, yeah. It's really key. Well, it's, they always have three big meals. Yeah. But then they always encourage you to have little snacks in between. So it's almost like a six meal yeah, day, we, if that makes sense. We, we raided the corner shop down in, I think we were yeah. in Malaga one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That corner shop got cleared out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made a lot of money that, that week, didn't they? Uh, nice yeah. Food. Yeah. All yeah. of our spending money that our parents gave us all, it's meant to go on food. So don't, don't worry yeah, about spending yeah. it on food. It's when you come back with like a hundred dollar t- <laughs> t-shirt and your dad's like, did you eat? a waste of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so you gave me the money, I can't spend it. Yeah. I remember doing a like a drinking competition. So we had these massive uh maybe How old were we? As in a water water oh, okay. to stay hydrated. And the two litre bottles you had to clear out one of those or maybe even two of those a day. Really? It's quite tough to do that actually. Blimey. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think I could that's do that. Without the training sessions. So obviously in a two hour yeah, session yeah. you that's two litres per session. Yeah. And then you have to get rid of two litres again on the, the downtime if you like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um so another key part of training camps, mm. not the swimming, not the eating, the downtime. Yes, so yeah. it's going to be, we, we said you're independent from your parents, it's your first holiday away. It's kind of a time that you really need to be quite sensible. Yeah, again, I, I, is, I found out this the hard this way. This is where it took me uh, maybe the third training camp to realise actually when I'm not swimming and we're at the hotel resting, you do actually need an hour, yeah. hour and a half sleep. I think Otherwise, you have to you have to recharge. You can't. Yeah. We it's were difficult. actually on lockdown. We mm. had to shut the room. We the chaperones locked the doors, locked us in. Yes, and said, yeah. Look, sleep, sleep until sleep lunch. for two hours. Yeah. Um, and my first ever training camp. We teased this in last week's podcast. I, Dan doesn't know this story. Okay. So we had some downtime. We had a free, a free hour or two before the session. Yeah. Um, and we were in Lignano, so near Venice in Italy. We were by the beach in this whole training complex. And I think us 14 year old boys decided, you know what? We'd go play some rugby on the beach. Okay. That, that was good fun. Yeah, but it was. No. Okay. No, it really wasn't because uh, I got knocked out cold. <laughs> Someone punched you? No, no. no. Someone's <laughs> knee went straight into the side of my temple. Oh, very nice. And to this day, I yeah. cannot remember that half of the training camp really? at all i can remember afterwards i can remember waking up with my so face you still swam no i was so gonna say I, I was stopped from swimming for i think two sessions afterwards okay um so because, a proper concussion obviously. yeah I, two I days really is probably wobbly. not a long and i mean the, the only thing you had to do was look at the guy's knee the which had swelled up to twice oh, the size to kind of realize the damage it had done so i think from that moment on i was just like yeah, no. If I want to take swimming camps seriously, maybe don't play rugby on the beach. Well, it's, give, it's a good idea to stop your rugby when you did, because that's obviously a poor technique of tackling. For your head to I go was the best rugby player on that beach by a mile. Really? And yet there's you on the floor and <laughs> Knocked out cold, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't say a lot. The guy just had bony knees. He was a breaststroker. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he well, he's very accident prone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> still is to this day, isn't he? Yeah. What's that? Ten years, ten plus years later. Yeah, yeah. And he's, and he's a builder somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, downtime is actually really important. So you should probably not go and do the extra sport. I mean, ha- then... by by all means, have fun. I mean, some people took Xboxes in their suitcases and stuff. Yeah, like that. Yeah, we took playing cards and stuff like that. Yeah, but anything physical, just uh, just keep it on the down low. Just. Yeah, because then, I mean, it's all very good having a good time on the beach. There was usually a session, if you're there for the week, then you're doing 14 sessions. We usually missed out maybe one or two as almost just a rest time. Oh, five or six for me. Oh, but when you were knocked out, yes. I meant in general. No, no, no. This was other training camps where the meters were just so high that I was just like, yeah, you know what? Nah. Oh, you, oh, oh, so you I'm, bottled it? I'm good. Oh, so I thought you'd be bottling yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. it was like a warm weather training camp in October to Dublin. It snowed. Yeah, they're called warm weather training camps for such a reason. So <laughs> it snowed. <laughs> Cold and horrible. Yeah, I can imagine. And then See, I went to nice through. places. I went to, where did I go? I went to Malta. I've been to Barcelona, Tunisia, Turkey. Yeah, Malaga as well, actually. Yeah, so. Oh, did we do a Malaga one together? I don't think you were, no. Because, no, I think you stopped swimming by then. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then. Uh, I went to Cardiff and then realised actually what we did on those warm weather training camps happens on a weekly basis. Is, yeah, so that's so, that's kind of the last point about training camps. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to understand how Olympic trialists or Olympians train. Or professional then, types. Yeah, almost. professional. Yeah, yeah. The training camp is a really key example of yeah, what your life what could be like. Mm. I mean, Dan... Lived, I did it. lived it for I, I did it for two years I think I two did it for until I got hit with appendicitis and then actually had to stop but uh, yeah it's, it's a bit of an hit eye opener with appendicitis yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so overall kind of training camps 
good fun. Enjoy yourself. But you do have to put the effort. Put, in. put the effort in. Yeah. Don't don't do a squat and just no, coast don't do it. A squat. Play rugby on the beach. Enjoy it. Um, <laughs> concentrate on your diet. Really make sure you put the calories in because, man, there's nothing worse than burning out. That and hydration. I mean, they're, they're key. Yeah, like you, you're you're going to be going to hotter coaches. places, doing more meters than yeah, ever. You see coaches bang on about it all the time. Where you've got this, like, the, um, when you have a car and you're putting fuel into the car, that's yeah. essentially what food is for that's, us, isn't that's it? That's a nice so, analogy. analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we've got to do all that, that stuff. Work um, hard, but play hard also. Well, not too hard. Sleep. Not, Catch up on your sleep. sleep. Play cards. Nothing physical, definitely. Um, and enjoy the independence. And hopefully it'll give you a real taste for what professional swimming is actually like. If you want to go down that route, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that ends the main segment of this week's podcast. It does. Hopefully it's not been too many stories of our training camps. Well, and fact, hopefully so. <laughs> a bit intellectual. Okay, moving on to the news in swimming this week. Yes, not much. No. So we've both both been researching. Yep. Not really found much at all. There's nothing of note. And Mr. Professional, why is that? Mr. Fe- what do you mean? What? Because oh, come what? on, explain to the masses why this time of year is quite quiet. On oh, I see what you mean. Uh, getting to the end of the training block, the winter block. And of course, with, win- uh, with Olympics just coming down the road, then... Um, T- tapers are starting it's soon, but not tapering yet. Tapering will be starting very soon, so that's the reason why no real competitions are happening just yet. Yeah, there will be. They'll be in their home pool. They'll be grinding out the meters, and you know, especially for those distance swimmers. If not, then they'll be doing drills and stuff like that. Especially yeah. the, the sprinters, all, James Gibson. All, all quiet as, as yeah. usual. There's all the counties going on on Instagram. That's good to see as always. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there is actually one really, really good feel-good story of the week coming yeah. out of. I mean, everyone knows them. Millfield. Millfield. Big Huge. international school, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, and on the international basis, there is a swimmer there called Adam G, mm-hmm. who actually, his family have been caught up in the Australian bushfires. And yes, he has a lot yeah. of friends there. So what he's doing is he's swimming a 10K on Tuesday the 4th, if I'm correct. 4th of right. February. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he's looking to raise £10,000 for... Yeah. So he's swimming 10K to... to- Get yeah. 10k, yes. So right so. now he's at eight thousand pounds, which is an yeah, incredible that's a, that's amount. That's staggering. Of money. Yeah, he's done very, very yeah. well, hasn't he? Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to link in the description of this podcast on YouTube on your podcast provider. We're going to link yeah. his fundraising page, absolutely. And hopefully, all our listeners will go over there. And if you just donate one pound, one dollar, that's great. It was a great cause you got to. Yeah, it's a brilliant yeah. cause. Mm. Um, and swimming for charity is. It doesn't get much better. That's, that's all I can do these days. Well, I can't race. Yeah. But the, that Australian fires are just they're not letting up really. I mean, it's going to go into their summer soon as well. So it's only going to get yeah, worse, so, I yeah. feel. So it's not all the money that we can, yet, or people like Adam can uh, raise is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's a really good job. Absolutely. Big shout out to him. Yeah. yeah. Great job. Um, did you know I actually did a swim for charity? You have, you told me. Yeah, I they did don't it. know, so you yeah, no. tell them. I, I did the Great North Swim. Unlike yeah. Adam, I raised a massive £500. I mean, it's better than a kick in yeah. the teeth, isn't it? But Sprinter here did 2k open water. No, two miles open water. Yeah, so it ends up being about 3k, yeah. I've just... Okay, so that... The mistake I made between 2k and two miles then... Yes. That happened in my training build-up to this two-mile open swim. Okay. For about six months training beforehand... I was training for a 2K. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big so, distance difference. You were missing so the, a third so of the, the swim. week before, yeah. I was just like, you know what? I'll just do this 2K. I, I'll do it in the pool. I'll see if I can do it. Yeah. Before I went and actually did the open water at Lake Windermere. I was like, yeah. great. I did it. I looked at the sign up sheet and I was just like, two miles. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? Huge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so this is a week before, and I was just like, oh, God. Didn't you place quite well, though? Yeah, uh, I came, like, top 15. 15th, yeah. Wow. I mean... For a sprinter, that's pretty impressive. In the in the middle of third year of university, it was... Um, <laughs> it's an experience, but yeah. my God, did my maths let me down, or my reading. Well, yeah. Definitely I, I did the, Definitely down. the English reading, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> to end this week's podcast, yep. as always... Dan's favourite segment, his tutorial of the week. Yes. What do you have for us this week? 
Um, it's another freestyle drill. So what we've done, or what I've wanted to do, is make um, like a playlist, like a series of freestyle drills. This so is, our very yeah. first one was Swordfish, and it's almost progressions on from Swordfish. We had Swordfish in the first one, then we had Shark Fin, and then this week is Six Kick Switch. Okay, so all of these progressions are kind of aimed at kind of your high elbow front core technique. For the shark fin, definitely. So this one is now including the body rotation because okay. you're switching from side to side. So you're doing the six kicks in swordfish that we've previously practiced on both the shark fin and the swordfish. Yep. Right? Um, and then once you do the six kicks, you're then switching onto the other side and practicing the body rotation as you change okay. sides, right? Yeah. Um, and just trying to maintain a strong leg, uh, strong kick, uh, keeping a high body position. Yeah. And then you can try to build... We are gonna. We have put it on the video as well, where you can kind of join two together. So you can do shark fin mixed with six hit switch. Yeah. But you'll see that on the video, which is uploaded already on YouTube. Um, it's, it's not quite uploaded. At, at the point of recording this podcast, I haven't quite finished the edit. But when you're listening to this podcast, it has been uploaded. Okay. Awesome. The magic of technology. Anyway, I'm tech illiterate, so I don't really... <laughs> okay, so as always, that video is up. I promise it's done. Yes. It will be by the time you're listening to this I keep podcast. pestering him every day. It's like, is it done? Is it done? Is it done? I've done my bit. And just so, made me film it like a few days before yeah. as the live. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you could go over to our YouTube, subscribe to that. Um, and also for this podcast, if you could subscribe, you can hear us every week. Um it will really help us go up the rankings in the swimming podcast world. We're looking to become the number one podcast for everyone to hear yeah. kind of swimming news and for us to really promote swimming. So again, if you have any feel good stories like Adams, we mentioned earlier, absolutely. We'll give please, some, yeah. some chats, shout outs. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Contact us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Just leave a comment Anywhere. below. Yep. Um, and for now, I will see you in seven days. And we'll catch you on the next one.